The FAA issued special airworthiness information bulletin. All right, that's the lesser of the two. Uh, on December 17th, back in 2018, regarding the potential disengagement of fuel control switches the, in the locking feature portion of them, uh, the bulletin was issued based on reports that operators of model 737 airplanes, this is not the 787, but they are a similar type switch, uh, the 737 airplanes, that the fuel control switches were installed keyword with the locking feature disengaged. All right, so let me show you a picture now on the screen of what the locking feature is. It's just a little piece of metal that's flat on one side and it's rounded on the other. The switch now that is spring-loaded gets grasped by the pilot's hands, it gets pulled out and it gets placed on top of that little flat uh, piece of metal. When the two engage, that's the detent that holds it in place. And it, it can't jiggle out, it can't vibrate out. It stays in there. Why? Because it's spring-loaded into position, but it's also held by that piece of metal. If that whole mechanism were installed upside down, which it could be, you couldn't actually put the fuel control switch into the run position. Why? Because it would slide off every time. It wouldn't lock into place. It would slide off. So if it was installed backwards, you would know that immediately. Apparently they had some installation problems. This is just my theory on what this is talking about. It was installed probably backwards or improperly and they knew right away. Was that an issue on the 787 and Air India 171? No, it wasn't because uh, it, it's been working just fine. Uh, there were no issues with it, as far as we know, from any report, official or unofficial. So with that being said, take that for what it's worth, all right? But there was some wiggle room put in here for the fact that the, the fuel control switches might not have locked or engaged properly. I don't think that was an issue at all in this incident. Now, continuing on, uh, I want to take a look now next at, and there's lots of information here about the crash and how the airplane landed and, and what it, buildings it hit and what part of the airplane hit first and second and all that. I want to go to uh, the data now from the data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder, because this is the play-by-play, second-by-second, what took place in that cockpit, and it starts from the takeoff roll. So let me begin there. Uh, according to the flight data recorder, the aircraft crossed the takeoff decision speed of V1 and achieved 153 knots of indicated airspeed at 080833 universal time. So 0808 is the first time marker on this report. What is V1? That's the go, no-go speed. 